welcome to episode 81 of the Kevin Janet podcast. Today it is Thursday, it's March 7th, and it is a gorgeous spring day here in Denmark. We finally have a little sunshine and it feels like spring is just actually here. We still had a little, um, not snow, but you had that little frost on the, on the roofs this morning. So we still have a little bit of the cold winter, but I can tell the spring is just around the corner. So that feels really good. Welcome to the channel. My name is Camilla. I am a Danish hand dyer and knitwear designer. And I live here in Denmark with my family, my husband and our two daughters. And uh, yeah, this is an, an episode, not an episode, but a podcast and also an episode about yarn, knitting, uh, knitwear designing and also dyeing yarn. I think today I will be here at the studio for some of the episode and then I will take you with me to the showroom and my uh, dyeing studio place and uh, talk a little bit about some of the new colors that I have dyed and uh, give you some inspiration for a new design that I came up with and do some color combos when we're at the studio. But first we're here in my office. So first things first, I finally finally have a design out there for testing that's so exciting it has been a long time since i published uh a knitting pattern i don't think i published anything since i released my banyal sweater last fall so um yeah it has been a little while i'm too busy dyeing yarn so uh i showed you this uh, mega stripe sweater in the last episode uh, it is knit in my mega mohair and you need a skein and a half in each color for the small size. I have done three sizes because this is such an oversized sweater. I decided to do three sizes but still be very size inclusive. So the largest size is I think a mm, 5XL or 4XL. Um, so it's still very... Uh, inclusive, size inclusive. Um, it's being tested right now. I have some, um, a lot of testers testing this for me and they have chosen so many beautiful color combos and I'm so excited to be seeing the results of those. I did not have anyone volunteer to do the plus size um, test. So I really need some um, plus size uh, knitters or someone who would like to just do the plus size uh, the, the largest size for this test so um, it's always a little difficult for test I can I can tell I'm not the only designer who has trouble getting some of those um, people out there to do the, the, the larger sizes and um, that's 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 uh, it's, it's a shame because I really want to be able to publish patterns that have been tested in all the sizes so that no matter the size you are the pattern has been thoroughly tested and uh, yeah, so uh, please feel free to contact me if you'd be interested in um, knitting the larger size. That would be great. You still only need for the larger size two skeins of every color. Uh, so two skeins of your contrasting color and two skeins of your main color. And since the you can choose white as one of your colors, that's a way cheaper option because uh, I don't charge as much for the undyed <laughs> yarn as I do for the dyed yarn. And also if it's just for me, I offer 40% on the on the hand dyed yarn and uh, not 40 percent on the white because um it has already it's already uh on a discount if you can put it like that <laughs> so this is the one that i did for my youngest esther and i think i promised the last time to actually put pictures of her wearing the sweater in here and i think i forgot so i'll do that now so you can see what it looks like um uh, when someone is wearing it. And I also said the last time that my oldest daughter Nomi wanted me to knit one for her in the combination of beige and green. And uh, once I dyed the green for her, she was really indecisive if she wanted to do the green with the beige. So she chose another option. Um, so this is the green that I dyed for her. I call this one Fern Forest. And she really, she was really satisfied with this green color, but she didn't want to go with the, with the beige. Uh, contrast. So she actually just chose the white one. So I think very soon I will cast on her version of the sweater and um, I will knit in the same size as for Esther. So even though they are like a small and a medium, they will, this same sweater will fit because it has such a large circumference. This is actually the circumference I would usually wear. So you can choose the size depending on how large and circumference you want. If you want 
to have a lot of extra positive ease or not so much positive ease. That is totally up to you. But she chose uh, this combination and I think that's a really great choice. I love this green with the white. I think it looks really good. Um, I have dyed a few new colors in the Mega Mohair. Uh, two different blue ones and a sage. I will show you that later. I think that I did like a navy blue that I think would look really good with the white, like this classic sailor themed <laughs> stripy uh, look. So I'm thinking maybe I should do one for myself or at least just do one for pictures and for bringing with me when I go to yarn events. Like next weekend, I'm going to a yarn event in Weile in Denmark called Fieberfolk. And Fieberfolk is, is like the biggest, I would say at least, like the biggest, biggest knitting festival um, concept we have in Denmark, Fieberfolk. They go to, I think this year, Fieberfolk has like four different uh, places they go to. They go to in Weile, which is close to where I live. Then they have one near Copenhagen in Roskilde. This year they have one at the Fanner Knitting Festival, which was, there's been so much, not drama, but a lot of new decisions around the Fanner Knitting Festival, which is actually a festival that has been in like the small island of Denmark for many years. It's a very popular knitting festival, if not the most popular one. I think last few years have been like 10 or 20,000 knitters there. And uh, the knitting festival was sold to another area in Denmark, but they, uh, of course, they can't sell the island. So knitting, you know, there's so many traditions about going to Fainu for the knitting festival that even though they sold the festival to go somewhere else, people still want to go to Fainu. So Fieberfolk decided to do a few days of knitting festival there anyway in the weekend that we all usually go to Fainu anyway. So I will be attending that in Fainu as well in September. And then I hope they will still do one in Olbo, which is like the northern part of Denmark. So they will have four knitting events this year and I will be attending all four, at least the first three. We don't still don't know about the, the one in Olbo in November, if that's going to happen or not. And also they don't promise you a spot every time you apply for a spot for the festival and then they will let you know if you can participate or not. So we're not guaranteed a spot every time they do a, an event. But so far I have been so lucky that they have always picked me to be a part of the festival and I'm very grateful for that. Also financially it's a it's a it's it's a pretty important things thing for us dyers and knitters and and people who live um has this as a job. It's pretty important that we that we get actually get a spot at these events because uh, it's it's part of our income. So we are really sad when we're not there, both financially but also because it's just uh it is just it's just the best feeling to be around other knitters and our colleagues and it's a it's a great place for us to interact with each other and say hello and you know behind the scenes we're all just really good friends so it's always nice to hang out with the other hand dyers and knitting knitting knitwear designers and stuff so it's always such a treat and a joy and to be there and this year i'm bringing Lars with me to violet so he can help me pack the van and drive the van and unpack the van and and build the booth and get everything ready and tina will be there as well but she won't be she won't be that helpful because she still has her like in a cast, but we will have fun and um, I'm very excited. So if you're anywhere close to Violet next weekend, I will be there on Saturday all day long. Um, yeah, that was a little, <laughs> that was a little yarn event um, commercial. <laughs> anyway, this was my Mega Stripe uh, sweater. It's being tested. Um, I have a few testers in the US, so once they get the yarn, it'll take a week or so, and for them to finish the sweater will take a week or two. So I'm I'm hoping that by May this pattern will be will be out. So I'm very excited about that. Next thing on my needles uh, is in my tote bag, and I did this little. Uh, can we say a vote, or at least I was asking for your opinion on these huge tote bags, whether to do with uh, those with um, my hand dyed yarn skeins or to keep the the feathers. And um, it's so hard because personally, I just love the feathers because I think they are so cute. And um, a lot of you said feathers as well. And my and Esther, my younger, she said, well, anyone will wear, use a tote bag with feathers, but if you have yarn on there, it will only be knitters who would want to wear that. So I think I'll go for the feathers, at least for the big one, and maybe I can do smaller tote bags with yarn skeins for the larger one. But I haven't, I haven't sent anything to production yet. I'm still thinking. 
and I want to be sure what I want to do before I have like hundreds of these made because that's a, that's a big investment for a little company like me. I need to make sure that they will actually sell before I order uh, huge amounts. Anyway, um, I did some progress on the melancholy sweater. I think the last time I showed it to you, I hadn't divided for uh, body and sleeve yet. And I have now. And I'm working on the body, so as you can tell, I got a long way. Um, I haven't measured this. I would, I would say it's probably 15 inches or so. Um, luckily, I'm going to the summer house this weekend, and I'll have so much knitting time. So I'm, I'm sure I'll be done with the body before I get home. And then sleeves. It takes me a day or two to to knit a sleeve. So I know once I get to the sleeves, it's like five days at the most. Uh, finishing this sweater and I can't wait for Esther to try this on and um, and take some pictures I really needed some new good pictures of this design I only have a few pictures with me wearing my the first one that I did which is like a pink and the pictures are really bad <laughs> and then I have some gorgeous pictures of Ina and she uh, tested this sweater for me back in the days and she did some beautiful pictures of her in the green version of the sweater and she's actually my cover model on my patterns but I thought it would be just a good opportunity for me to do some of my own designs in my own yarn to just kind of make everything go together and uh, and also it's just good to show sometimes your designs in a neutral color so they don't think you only can do it in a pink version because we also, when we choose patterns to knit, believe it or not, <laughs> or admit it or not, uh, we fall in love with the color as well. I know my friend Mary, who has the local yarn store, she says that it's like 80% of everyone who comes and say, I want to knit this sweater, and they will have a pattern, of course, not this exact sweater. They want to knit the color that is on the picture. And if she is sold out of that color and says, well, you can do another color, no. So we oh, we do not only fall in love with the pattern, we actually also fall in love with the color of what is ever is on the sweater. So um, it's it's and it's the same with my own patterns. If I have, um, if I bring to a yarn event an, a knitted version of something, they want the colors of the knitted version. I said, well, it it will be just as cute in this color, and people are like, no, I want the color that you did. <laughs> so it's always good to be able to show different varieties or different colors of a pattern so you you can actually appeal to more than just one type of people not a type of people but to more than one color so um so that is that's why it's, it's good it's a good idea to have different uh color choices for people to look at when they decide for a a pattern but this is um this is such a wonderful um knit i think um I always have that, I don't know if you can recognize this, but when I knit and I do, um, this is knit top down. So when I do the raglan increases, I'm like, increases or decreases? In increasing, right? Yes. <laughs> um, I always think, oh, I just can't wait for the raglan to be over with. So I just have to knit in the round. And the second I get there, it's like, oh, this is so boring. <laughs> I'm just knitting in the round. But because this is a uh, uh, three by one ribbing, it's just, I don't know, there's something about that. It's just, it's like medi meditative. Do you say that? Meditative. <laughs> so it's just so, it's just, there's a little bit of variety, but it's, but it's still um, so little that it doesn't mess with my <laughs> concentration or anything. I can still watch TV and even uh, knit this without looking. Uh, at least uh, most of the time. Sometimes I do a whole row and I have kind of gotten it off by one stitch and I have to go back around. But um, most of the time, like 99% of the time, I can knit a three by one ribbing without looking. And uh, so that makes it both interesting and easy. And uh, that's just, uh, that's perfect TV knitting for me. So um, yeah, I'm really enjoying this. And, uh, and once that is done, I really want to do a new shawl design i have a new base uh, my messiah base uh no uh resemblance intended to messiah <laughs> it's just that it's uh, short for merino single yak 
and it is a beautiful base that I saw when I was in Barcelona. I can show you the skein that I have from Felicio Punto. <laughs> I saw this base in um, in uh, when I was in Barcelona for the Barcelona Knit Festival, and I got this skein, and then I realized that the base was actually available for me to buy as a hand dryer. So I got this base and I call this uh, Messiah in my shop, but it is, this, it is the same yarn. And I want to do like a one skein wonder shawl. Uh, and because there's 120 grams in this skein, you actually have a little bit more yardage to do a shawl than compared to just a normal fingering weight, 100 gram skeins where you have like uh, 400 and maybe 400 uh, meters or 420 meters. But here you actually have 480 meters so that is perfect then i thought well i cannot do color work because i want to do like a one skein so you can just buy one skein of this luxury yarn and you can knit yourself a beautiful shawl and then i thought well mm, it has to be interesting uh along the way so i was just hoping that maybe you would um give me some feedback so if you if you do like a little short knitting project, for me at least, it has to there has to be something that keeps me motivated to pick up my work and knit on it. So it can't only just be garter stitch. Sometimes that's what my mind wants, but for this particular design, I want I want this feeling we get when we have an interesting um, knitting project. So let me know what is your favorite elements when you are um, working on something and do you even know because I don't I don't actually know what it is that kind of motivates me to pick up a, a knit. Sometimes it's the yarn and sometimes it's the design and sometimes it's the color I think and sometimes it's the combination <laughs> sometimes it's color work like stripes can motivate me to, because I just want to see what it looks like when I add the next color or the next color. Um, so I was just kind of curious to get some feedback on if you wanna, if you wanna, if you're gonna knit on something fairly small like this. Do you have anything that you know? Oh, if this is included in the in the pattern, I get extra excited. Or does it have to be? Because I don't want to do like a very complicated lace pattern. Because for me at least, if you put that away for a little while and you pick it back up, then it's just hopeless to. Oh, where did I where did I get in the pattern? So I want to have a little bit of texture <laughs> and a little bit of something fun and uh, but still like easy. And I put three keywords. I said um, fun, easy, and interesting. So what kind of elements do you think would be great to have in a pattern to keep it fun, easy, and interesting? And uh, if you give me some feedback, I'll see if I can incorporate that into a new design using this uh, gorgeous uh, yarn. I think I might just use this one because I picked this out at, um, at the Barcelona Knit Festival. It was actually Lisa from And So On uh, that uh, we spent so much time at the Barcelona Knit Festival. There was a bunch of us there. Um, if you haven't seen my vlog from Barcelona, go back and see. I was hanging out with some um, of my my good friends from this podcasting <laughs> world, uh, Selma and Anina and Lisa and um, uh, and uh, Ivana and uh, Anastasia. There were just so many people there. It was such a, it was such a blast. We had so much fun. Anyway, I was with Lisa and she showed me this uh, brand of yarn. I didn't know this brand of yarn before, and. Um, And I felt this and it just feels so good. So um, yeah, in my shop it's called Messiah. I'll put a link down below so you can go check out the colors. I did some new colorways yesterday, the day before. I think they'll be ready to uh, to twist today so you can see the new colors that I did in that base and, and whatever else new colors I made. And when we go to the studio um, later. Tonight I have knit group at the, at the church. I uh, do some volunteer work at the local church and one of the things is that I started uh, with some of my other uh, co-workers there, a knit group. So every month a bunch of women get together for chatting and knitting and uh, I love to spend my evening there. The, the, the perfect thing is that it's just um, so many different generations that meet. Like 
the youngest person there is like 17 or 18 and uh, the oldest i don't know <laughs> like 80. <laughs> So I love this uh, interaction with all these women knitting and doing other crafts and um, talking and drinking lots of coffee and having beautiful cakes and just hanging out and and enjoying ourselves. It's just uh, it's just it's a beautiful thing and I can't I can't wait to go. And also this month on the 21st, we have uh, our second knitting event at um, our studio, me and Tina's uh, studio um and showroom we have we had our first knitting event last month and 25 happy knitters came and bought a ticket and had coffee and bought some yarn and they would just sit and knit and have a glorious time and uh, we are having that again on the 21st and i'm so excited about that i just love to fill my space down there with happy knitters and uh it is the it is just it is the best feeling ever to be able to have the space to invite so many knitters to come and hang out. And I wish you all could come and, and hang out with us as well. Uh, all the tickets are sold out for March and April. So Tina, I was thinking maybe we should do this more often. Uh, or maybe we should try to expand and have um, a little bit more room so we can have more people there. I think the limit right now is like 24. <laughs> people and um, we'll see if we can expand uh, that means people have to sit at like in the dye studio and not in the showroom and we don't know if people will be okay with that or they can sit upstairs in our little office space <laughs> and uh, yeah we're, we're still thinking how to how to manage that if we should do more dates or uh, more space we'll, we'll see but it's definitely just such a blast to have uh, the opportunity to invite all these knitters to come and, and hang out at our place and just share this space with with uh, crafty people it's just beautiful thing um this weekend i'm going to the summer house me and lars are going there we have some a meeting with uh some what is that called in english like uh professional woodworkers and <laughs> and crafty people um because we want to do some improvements to the summer house we want to add some huge windows we want to paint the the whole interior of the summer house because right now it's just very dark and brown and we want to do like a new deck uh, around the whole summer house so we can have a new deck. The one we have now is like really old <laughs> and slippery and not good. So yeah, we're going to do there, go there very early in the morning and spend the whole weekend there and have some meetings and do some long walks. The weather's supposed to be real nice. So I can't wait to do long walks with uh, my husband and my dog and uh, just have some knitting time and relax time. That'd be nice. And I thought about actually doing a vlog when we go there because it's just been so long since I did any vlog related things. I haven't done anything since Vlogmas, so um, if you're in for a little vlog, let me know if you if you like that kind of content or if you're more into the podcast. I have thought about doing Patreon, and if you do not know what Patreon is, it's like a paid for channel. It's kind of like YouTube, except that you pay for access, so you can have like a membership and you pay a certain amount every month. It doesn't have to be a lot of money at all, but for me, it's a way to... Mm, to be able to share kind of private things, not super private, but still my personal life and my inside of my houses and my homes and my summer house and my thoughts and whatever is going on in the family and still keep that kind of private because right now when I do a vlog, it's just out there on YouTube for everyone in the entire world to see. And that feels a little scary sometimes that I actually share private things, not private private, but you know, but you know what I mean, right? So for my life. And uh, if I do Patreon, it will still be a way for me to make sure that the only one I'm watching are actually really interested in <laughs> whatever is going on and not just uh, curious people or, I don't know, people who used to know me or whatever, nosy people who just want to see what is Camilla doing there on the internet and be uh, criti criticizing or judging or talking about it. I don't know. I don't think that people do that, but just it's just a way to keep it a little bit more private and not just out there for the whole world to to go and see so let me know if i do patreon it would not be for the podcast it would only be patreon for like vlogs and stuff and um let me know if you would go on board with me on a patreon for only vlogs just to because if no one wants to go <laughs> it's not gonna happen but um it's just a thought <clears throat> actually someone wrote me if you would ever do patreon i would join you and i thought well maybe it's actually a good idea for me to do some kind of content that i would not be f so comfortable just throwing out here on youtube where everyone can watch so it's a thought uh let me know um 
I do not have much more knitting to show you here because I'm just still working on this sweater and I haven't had that much knitting time the last two weeks. I've been dying yarn like crazy just to get um, all my my stocks filled up and redye all the stuff that was so loud. I have hair issues. <laughs> um, so let's go to the studio and check out the new colors in the Mega Mohair and on the Messiah base and maybe we should yeah, do some color combos and I will twist some yarns and we'll take a look at what's going on at the studio. Welcome to the studio. So uh, behind me, you can see some of my yarn. This is my new base, the Kemajo Sock Yak base. And you can see I'm currently working on filling all those spaces with new dyed yarn, new colors. And I just did four, three new blues. That's going to be there. Two of them are not going to stay. That's just Sometimes when I try out new combinations of colors, um, some of them I like and some of them I don't like. And I have a few that I like that I'm going to keep and some that I don't like that much. So they're just going to be in the shop for a short while. And once they're sold, they will not return. So that's the way it is. It goes in and out all the time. I also did two of the new blues that I really, really like. Uh, these two. I think I'm going to call this one navy. And I haven't decided on a name for this one yet. It's more, it's closer to teal without being teal. But uh, if you have a good suggestion for this one, uh, I would appreciate it. I really wanted to do a new blue. Um, I have my new colorway, which is like a color that has been with me since I started to dye yarn. It was the first blue one that I did that I really liked and kept. And this marine one or navy. It's a color that I have been kind of working on to see if I could really nail that navy blue. And I think this is the first time that I really think I nailed it. I really want it to be saturated and dark and just really beautifully blue. And this one I like as well, very rich uh, blue color. So these two new blues are going to stay in the shop and some of the other ones I did are not going to stay. Um, but I like the navy so good that I did that in the Mega Mohair. And I had someone ask me at, after the last episode if I could just kind of show some good uh, combos <laughs> for the upcoming Mega Stripe uh, sweater. And I'm thinking this navy with the white would just be the classic, perfect uh, version. I just, Nomi just dropped off. Esther, she's here working at the moment. And Nomi was deciding on the green one uh, with the white that I just showed you from the house and now she came here and she saw the blue one and she said, no, maybe I want the blue one. So I'm just not going to cast on until she decided on the color combo that she wanted. But I personally really like this combination. I also just took, I dyed some uh, new peach, peach and white, it's always a good choice, but I just saw the peach and the brown together and I thought that would be really cute as well. So yeah. It's really just a matter, you can see all the colors here, and no matter what to take and add that with the white, would this be cute? With the pink, this is the one I did already, the magenta, the red, I think all of them with white would be good. This combo I really like. Then I also did a very bright blue. Uh, this is a color I've done before, I call this one Atlantic. Atlantic? No, Atlantis. <laughs> um, and it's very bright blue. I have it in my DK sock as well. And this color is actually based on a wish from a, another Danish podcaster. And she really wanted this true blue, dark blue. <laughs> and uh, in my search to do the right blue, I did this one. And uh, it's we call it the Cecil blue because <laughs> that is her name, Cecil. But uh, I call it Atlantis. And so that would be great as well for the combo. So you can either do the navy or the Atlantis and uh, depending on what bright you want. I also did a new color for the makeup hair and the sage. And I thought that would be a very cute uh, stripe as well. And of course you don't have to stripe it with the white. It's just a you know, classic blue and sage, navy and sage, brown and sage, you know, green and sage. <laughs> A lot of great combinations. Um, so it was just to give you a kind of a um, 
stealing of the new colors for the Mega Mohair um, base. And also I did two new colorways for the Messiah um, base. Maybe I should show you all the old ones as well. I will actually, I'll, I'll take the camera and over here where I have the rest of the colors. These are some of the ones I've had all the time. This is Newer and Hazel. Uh, I just dyed more of those because I was uh, almost out. But this is the new color. I call this one Blush. It's a variegated with some darker and lighter colors. And this one is Oh Happy Day. And I have this on uh, other bases, but on this uh, Yak base, it just looks so good. So it's so soft. This is my favorite base. And I, this is the base that I talked about that I was going to do a one skein show with. And uh, I kind of like this color as well. It goes with my, uh, with my shirt. Ah, this is a good color as well. So <laughs> maybe I should do this one. I don't know. Anyway, blush and oh happy day and anything else here no i just uh, did my soft peach i have been dyeing soft peach on a lot of bases on my silk my hair and on my mm, what else on different bases i thought yeah it's out back there on my yak base no here <laughs> there uh, and I had someone who is testing my mega stripe sweater if I would dye some peach on my Suri alpaca base because you wanted to do the mega stripe sweater in my Suri alpaca. And that's totally doable. You just, uh, she was going to try it with three strands of yarn. I would recommend four, but um, because it's more fluffy than a normal silk mohair, I think maybe that will be enough with three strands. We will see. It's a good, uh, good thing that your testers wants to test the pattern but also new yarn combos i really like that but this peach is just stunning i just i just love this colorway anyway i will uh, take my camera and i will take you over to my messiah bases so you can see what they look like with the two new colors and you can just see the whole range of colors in that in that base so this is the colors i have so far so this is uh, I don't have put, I forgot to put a name tag, but this is Soft Apricot. This is Scallop Shell. This is a new one. Oh, happy day. This is one of the first one I did. This is Gold Digger. They're similar, but this has more orange. This has no orange. It's more peachy, plum kind of colors. Uh, Gold Digger, Blush, Hazel, Django. This is the green one. This is um, sugar pine, mint, and nyor. So these are the colors so far. Let me know if you have any wishes for a specific color you want me to try on this base. It will always turn out a little bit soft because the, the base has that natural gray color, as you can see here. So it will always have that undertone. So I hope you like the new Messiah colors. Uh, I know I'm pretty excited about that base, so I guess that wraps up. Anyway, I just um, today had a new kind of experience. Um, I recently signed up for Trustpilot, so people can go and check out and see if my business is a is a safe place to to shop. And uh, today I had my first really bad review. Uh, someone gave me one star <laughs> and which is really bad for your average when you're a new business and you don't have that many uh, ratings so far um, but uh, her uh, criticism was that on the pictures on my website you can tell that usually there will be multiple skeins of yarn to kind of display the colors the best um, I feel like when you try to show a color and you just show one skein it's kind of hard so if you have many skeins it'll kind of show the colors better especially when you have speckled yarn so you can tell that the speckles will be different uh, on the yarn so just to be more fair and show a more um, actually a more authentic look <laughs> on what the colors will look like on your yarn 
and um, her uh, her reason for giving me just the one star review was that on the picture there were four skeins of yarn, um, but she only received one skein. And uh, it says you have to pick how many skeins you want. It says number, and you pick if you want one, two, three, four, five, how many you want. And um, and I was just wondering, uh, is it me? <laughs> Do you think it's unclear how many skeins of yarn you get when you purchase something from my shop? Because if it is unclear, it's totally on me and I have to change the way I present my yarn and especially the, the text <laughs> that goes with my, uh, my pictures. So um, if I'm not clear enough, uh, let me know and I'll have to change it. If it's just one person thinking it's unclear, then I might not want to be uh, changing my all my text on my website um, and also I just want to encourage you if you have shopped any anything in my store uh, yarn or patterns or anything and you have not given me a review um, please do so if you want to of course um, it's just I feel and I recognize this with myself as well that if we have a bad experience when we shop somewhere we are faster to go maybe and give a bad review or something and not and maybe we don't do that as often when we have good experiences. So I'll just encourage you uh, to go and give me a review on Trustpilot if you have purchased something from me. Esther is spinning yarn in the spinner and uh, that's really noisy. I will let go for now because Esther is making noise and I can see this in a meeting so there's too much noise down here. But um, yeah. A review on Trustpilot, if you if you have something, uh, if you have a review to give, would be very nice. Um, I'm not complaining about a bad review. I just, I'm just, you know, I've not had such a bad review before. And uh, I was actually almost a little bit. Also, I would say if you want to give someone a bad review, I think it should be mainly if you had a, if there was something wrong with your product or if you experienced really bad service or if uh, your order got lost and you never got a new one or just you know the company won't communicate but I have had no chance to do anything about this so um, yeah if it's unclear that you only get one skein let me know and I will I will I will change my the text uh, if not I'll just leave it as it is and uh, and uh, and I'll accept my bad review of course <laughs> um, me and all my yarn will say thank you for watching and uh, I will see you next time.